Hey friends, today I'm going to read a book I just got in the mail. It's called A Bowl Full of Peace. It's based on a true story and it's told from the viewpoint of a little girl who lives in Nagasaki, Japan during World War II in August of 1945. The author's name is Karen Stelson. The illustrations are by Akira Kusaka and he lives in Japan still and they're really beautiful pictures. I really like history and I really think it's important for us to learn about history and to talk about the way we treat each other. And this book is just about that. Here's the bowl they're talking about in the title. So there's this word, it's hard to pronounce. It says, um, which is a traditional, traditionally spoken before eating a meal. This Japanese word means we humbly receive this food. And I will do my best to try to say it correctly throughout the story. No one knows how old grandmother's bowl is. No one remembers who made it. No one can count how many times the bowl has passed from mother to daughter. But everyone knows grandmother's bowl is precious. The city of Nagasaki sits along the Sea of Japan. Mountains rise up around the harbor and houses made of wood with paper windows dot the hillsides. On hot afternoons, Sachiko and her brothers, Aki and Ichiro, chase the dragonflies as cicadas buzz their summer song. In the evening, Sachiko's family gathers together. Mother places grandmother's bowl in the middle of the low table. As always, the bowl offers good things to eat. Squid, eel, octopus, and udon noodles. Sachiko and her family press their hands together and bow their heads. Ita da kimas, they whisper. As Sachiko grows older, the sound of war comes to Nagasaki. The clanging of hammers building tor torpedoes, the marching of soldiers training for battle, the cries of those whose husbands, fathers, and brothers have been killed in the fighting. War for Sachiko means less and less of everything. Now grandmother's bowl offers only bits of mackerel floating in broth, but the family is still together. Even sister Misa and little Toshi learn to press their hands together. Ita da kimas, they say. The sounds of war grow even closer. The grunts of boys and girls digging air raid shelters into hillsides. The wail of air raid sirens echoing through the city. The rumbles of enemy bombers flying overhead. Sachiko is eager to start school, but after the first day, the school closes. Too dangerous, says the principal as he looks up at the sky. The family still gathers each night for the evening meal. Now grandmother's bowl offers only wheat balls floating in boiled water. Mother says, eat everything, children. Every bit is precious. Sachiko and her family press their hands together and bow their heads. Ita da kimas, they say. Summer comes again and the hot month of August arrives. On August the 9th, Sachiko's father visits a sick friend. Mother prepares breakfast. Aki, Ichiro, and Sachiko wait at the low table. So do Misa and little Toshi. Suddenly, the air raid siren begins to wail. Everyone runs for the shelter. They leave everything behind, even grandmother's bowl. Together, they huddle in the cave with their neighbors, hoping no bomb will fall from the sky. Finally, a siren blares, all clear, and everyone sighs. Outside, Sachiko's friends asked if she would like to play house. Yes, she would. Sachiko and her friends laugh together and make mud dumplings with their small hands. An enemy bomber rumbles high above the clouds. No one notices until it is too late. Sachiko looks around her. What happened? What do you think happened? Father, mother, Sachiko, and Misa arrive. Brothers Aki and Ichiro do too, but not Toshi. Little Toshi is killed in the blast. Remember, this is a true story. 
Through the day and into the night, fires burn across the city. Early in the morning, Sachiko's father makes a decision. We must leave Nagasaki. A train is coming to take us away from the city. We must go now. Follow me. Everywhere, people are suffering. I'm so thirsty, voices whisper. Water, please, please, water. Now, they haven't said, but it was an atomic bomb that was dropped on their city. And guess who dropped it? The United States. In a small hospital away from Nagasaki, Sachiko's brothers are very sick. No one understands why. No one understands it's because of the radiation from the bomb. Aki dies, then Achiro dies. Sachiko and sister Misa become ill, so do mother and father. Ice chips help soothe their burning throats, but nothing can stop the pain, not even the end of the war. So now three of her brothers have died. Two years pass before Sachiko's family returns to Nagasaki. Sachiko's father digs through the rubble that was once their home. Something glimmers in the dust, something green and shiny. Grandmother's bowl it has survived without even a chip or a crack. Think of how miraculous that is. The bowl, which is made out of clay, has been there for two years, went through a bomb, and has, has nothing wrong with it. Everyone in Sachiko's family has touched this bowl. Everyone has eaten from it, even Aki, Achiro, and little Toshi. At their evening meal, Sachiko's mother places the precious bowl in the middle of a wooden crate. Sachiko and her family press their hands together and bow their heads. Ita da Kimas. So originally they had five kids and now they have two. As cicadas sing their summer song, another August 9th arrives. In the morning, Sachiko's family kneels in front of the wooden crate. This time, Sachiko's mother fills grandmother's bowl with rice. Oh, with ice, I'm sorry. Sachiko's mother speaks softly. We must never forget what happened on this day. Remember how a cheap chip of ice eased our thirst? As the ice melts, let us remember all who suffered and, who, and all who died. We must pray that such a terrible war never happens again. Five years pass. The radiation from the bomb makes more people sick. Sachiko's sister becomes ill and dies. Another five years pass, and Sachiko's father becomes ill and dies. Each August, Sachiko's mother fills grandmother's bowl with ice. Sachiko and her mother watch the ice melt. Together they remember what happened. Together they pray for peace. Then Sachiko's mother becomes ill and dies. In August, Sachiko fills grandmother's bowl with ice. She bows her head as the ice melts. So now she's the only person left in her family. Radiation is very, very toxic and very poisonous and is um, obviously can kill you. Grandmother's bowl is now Sachiko's to care for. Sachiko fills grandmother's bowl with good things to eat, just as her mother did. She presses her hands together and bows her head. Ita da Kimas, she says. On August the 9th, 50 years after the war's end, this is 50 years after her first brother was killed, Sachiko fills grandmother's bowl with ice. She no longer, she can no longer be silent about what happened to her. She must tell her story. The world must know that such a bomb can never be used again. That evening, Sachiko stands before a group of children and shares her story for the first time. She begins, what happened to me must never happen to you. And the children listen. Do you see the origami paper cranes? People often use them as a symbol of peace. So here's a picture of her when she was a little girl. And this is a picture of her two brothers that died and her grandmother and one of her aunts. And here she is as an adult, and she's speaking to kids, telling them what, what happened during the war. And here's a picture of the real bowl that they've had for generations and generations. So as an adult, she did go around and speak to children, letting them know what happened during the war. Um, let's see. This atomic bomb, the first one was dropped in Hiroshima, and it killed 140,000 people. And this one, which was in Nagasaki, killed 74,000 people. Um, yeah, it was terrible. So the United States dropped this bomb on innocent people. Um, 
I guess hoping they could win the war and retaliate for things that had happened during the war because Japan had bombed Pearl Harbor. Um, I don't know. It's just really, really sad. And eventually the United Nations said they were not allowed to use atomic bombs anymore. It's like a crime against humanity. So she still has the bowl. And um, actually, I'm not really sure if she's alive anymore. I read this and it didn't say. So maybe I guess she is still alive. Anyway, I think it's really important to learn about history, like I said before. And I love to hear stories that are based on truth. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'd like you to think about how horrible that is. They're just regular people minding their own business. Kids out playing, doing their own thing. And then we decided to drop a bomb on them. I don't even know really what I'd like you to do. I'd just like you to tell me if you like the story or maybe what you think about the story. And I know a lot of people enjoy reading books about war, which I do too. But it's also important to see what really happens to the innocent people that become part of that war without meaning to. All right, friends. Happy reading.